we all have been using Google, we all use Yahoo, Microsoft Edge and those types of things. But as educators, we always crunch for time. I know for myself, I had a long day, right? But I know when I have to get home, I have to get resources and all of those things for my next lesson um, the next day or even for my activities or examinations or assessments. And the internet is a vast place where once you type in something, a keyword or a phrase, it pops up millions and millions of different things related to that search, right? And today we're just going to try to help you to try to narrow down this vast amount of resources that you will get on the internet and give you some nicks and tricks about how to maneuver your way around the okay. interweb. Now, the interweb has basically developed so vastly and so quickly that we also have the emergence of AI. So AI is basically things such as ChatGPT and uh, Bing as its own one. So if I just go into Microsoft Edge here quickly, right? So Bing has its own AI as well, the same as ChatGPT. So let me just search something quickly just to show you, right? So Microsoft Edge's, Edge uses an AI to basically help you to refine your searches. Now today we're not really gonna go in depth about what is AI, what AI can do and all of those things. But because AI is so prevalent in the rest of the world and is taking over the internet, most search engines are now basically building it into the um, search capabilities so that you can have a better result when you are searching for certain things, right? So like Microsoft Edge has its own one called Bing, which basically helps you out and basically does the same thing that ChatGPT does, right? So it is something that you can play around with, something that I encourage you to play around with. The capabilities are endless. Okay, so enough about AI. Let's get to what you actually came here for, the search engine. Right, so as I said earlier on, Okay, as you see there in my chat GPT, I'm always using it. We are basically going to start with images, right? How to search for images. Now we are always looking for different images for different activities, different examinations, and all of those things, right? I'm an English educator, unfortunately. I say unfortunately because I have to mark so many scripts, but it's one of the most enjoyable subjects ever because everyone needs it, well, some people, right? And I'm always looking for cartoon strips or advertisements or even a photo to um, accompany a comprehension, right? And it is really difficult to basically refine my searches because once you type in, say, poetry, it will give me 50,000 different pictures based on poetry. Or if I say things such as Romeo and Juliet, it will give me 50,000 different things, okay? But there are ways which you can refine the search and Google has made it easier by using their own AI, which is Google Lens, which is now just for the images, to help you actually refine your search based on the image as well, which is really exciting. If we want to get into Google Images, right, without going the normal way for by first typing in and then swapping over to images, we could either type image.google.com or we could just go to the top right, the left hand, right hand corner, sorry, right here, and then just press images. And then it will take us to the Google Images homepage. Now, the great thing about Google Images is that there's numerous ways that you can search for Im images. The one way is by just normally typing Romeo and Juliet. I've done it before, right? And then it will provide different pictures based on Romeo and Juliet, right? But that's the boring way. Now, today I want to show you the most exciting way, the one that I found out that was so, it blew my mind the first time that I actually played around with it. So, say you now have an image on your computer, on your phone, right? So it's maybe someone sent you an image of a Romeo and Juliet book or a Romeo and Juliet um, study notes. I'm going to use English terminologies because I'm an English teacher, but this actually relates to different subjects as well. Maybe someone has a book on natural science or physical science and they just sent you a photo of the book, right? And you are now trying to find out who published the book or if there's similar books like that one or if there's online study notes, but you only have the image. Okay, now what do you do? That's why Google Lens is here. So this camera, small camera right here. Right, so once you have the image on your computer, or even if the images, if you're doing it on a cell phone, you will just click on the search by image right here. And then you have two ways to search for the image, right? 
if you maybe just have the image link so someone just sent you a link to an image and when you click on it it opens up to the image you could copy that link paste it right here and then we'll take you directly to where the image was posted right or it will show you similar types of results right but as I said, for the example purpose, we just have a photo. I just have a photo of Romeo and Juliet. It's a book. And I don't know where to find it. I don't know if it's an online resource, but I enjoy it at school. All right, so now I have the image on my computer. So there's two ways you can do it. You, right, so then you'll just press the blue button right here to upload the file. You'll go to images. Where's my images? Clear pictures. Like. And here's my Romeo and Juliet book that I someone sent it to me and said, this is the greatest book under the sun. It's going to help my kids a lot. Now, there's two ways that I can do it. I can either drag and just paste it there, or I could go the normal way by clicking on the image and then press open. And then it will automatically upload the image to Google Lens. And then here on the right side, it will tell me all the places where I can find the book and it can tell me if the book, if there's an online version of the book or if there is not an online version of the book. This is all with Google Lens, right? So Google Lens is their type of AI that helps you basically identify photographs right? and provides similar searches to the different photographs. So it gives you a wider variety based on the photograph because I know what photographs previously before this um, emergence of the AI, we were not able to actually search images, right? You would just have to basically type the inscription of the image, scour the web for hours and hours and try to find, is this a similar one? Is this one related to whatever we are doing in class? Now you can just paste that photo into the Google Lens box and we'll basically find it for you. Okay, but it does not stop there. Now maybe you don't want to search the whole, um, book or the whole picture, right? Maybe you just want to search keywords or key parts of the novel or the book. Then you could make the search smaller by just clicking on this frame right here and then zoom in on certain things that you want the AI to focus on. So maybe I don't want this whole Romeo and Juliet thing. Maybe I just want something based on a graphic novel. All you have to do is just move it over the, and there you see. So then it will change based on what you have highlighted right there. So the search is also change. And maybe I just want it based on Romeo and Juliet. So maybe I don't want it just about Romeo and Juliet, this book. Maybe I just want it in general, Romeo and Juliet, the top part right there. And as you see there, it will also provide me different results based on the picture or the way I cropped out the photo. And search it by text. Right, so you can click on the text on the image or on the page and then it will basically give you results based on what um, text you have clicked on. So maybe I want a Romeo and Juliet, so then I'll highlight the Romeo and Juliet and then it will pop up different search results based on Romeo and Juliet. So no longer will I have to go out, go to my Google, type in manually, oh, this is what's standing on the image or on the page. I can just highlight the text. Right. So what I did was I moved over from search to text. I clicked on the text. And it basically gave me different search results based on the text. All right. So let's go back quickly. Right. So let's just search Romeo and Juliet. Let's, let's refine the search quickly. Romeo and Juliet, let's say book. Now, before I continue, so Creative Commons is what we basically, or what everyone uses. It's like when you have an image or even a document or even a PDF or whatever, right? And it's posted on a public domain like a search engine or you find it here on the internet, right? Creative Commons is a public copyright licenses that enable the free usage of copyrighted material, right? So if an image or a document doesn't have Creative Commons, you're technically not allowed to use it publicly. 
One thing that I think is is um, interesting to note, and it depends on a lot on what you're searching for, um, but a lot of these sites like Pixabay, like um, Unsplash, my personal favorite one is a thing called Free Pick. The word free is in the name, so then you know you're allowed to use it. Um, a lot of these sites are actually optimizing their, 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 their websites to make sure that their images do not just appear on Google image search because they want people to go to their website. So if you are looking for clip art, if you're looking for things like that, if you're looking for high quality photos, you actually end up finding better content when you go to the websites themselves as opposed to just using Google image search or any other of these Yahoo, whatever you want to use. You actually find better images on these websites themselves. Now Google allows you to actually search for certain um, images like that by going to the tools function right here. So if you press the tools function, they will pop down different filters, right? So you can filter by size, you can filter by color, by the type of image or by time. But we're gonna focus on this third one right here, which is, which is usage rights. Right, so if you click down on the Dropbox, there were three th different things that will pop up. So all, or will only give you images of everything. So images that has creative common license that doesn't, there's commercial and other license that doesn't. So every different type of image. But now you want to narrow it down to only images that has Creative Commons license. So images that allow you to use it publicly for free. So then you use the Creative Commons license. And then you'll just click on it right here to filter through the images. Right. And then all these images that they have provided me here as Creative Commons license. Right. So allow me to use it in the classroom, allow me to use it in front of everyone else. But I still can't profit from it because it's still the owner's property. So Safe Search was created to filter out explicit content, right? So content that you don't necessarily want to see or you don't necessarily want your kids or learners to see, right? So if you are searching for Romeo and Juliet, it will pop up certain other things that's maybe not kosher, so it's not really what you actually want to see. And that's why Google Edge and all the other search engines created a Safe Search where automatically they enable a safe search which will filter out all the explicit content and then only leave you with the awesome content the content that you actually want to see now you can right if you actually want to check if your safe search is on then you will just go to the right hand corner right here you'll press on safe search right and then as you see right here my safe search is controlled by my domain or by my um main person here at school so i can't save the search setting at the moment because someone else is controlling the safe search now that we have the images there now we have learned there's two of there's two or three different ways that we can search for images that we can search using an image that we can actually refine our search on an image by zooming into smaller bits of our picture that we have to use creative commons license when we are using someone's image or resources Right, now we're gonna go back to the normal way that we actually search. So we search by a phrase or we just search by a certain word. Now, with Google, you can also actually have an advanced search, meaning you can filter through the sites. What I mean by that is this, so let's say things fall apart. This is the novel that we are dealing with right now in grade 10. Right. Okay, so, once you have searched something, they will always pop up like 3 million or 300,000 or 2.5 billion results based on the certain word that you have searched for. And it sometimes takes you hours to actually go through each individual link or site to see what you're actually wanting or needing from that site. Now, with Google, they have created an advanced search button which allows you to filter through all 390 339 million or billion results so that you can find the ones that you are actually looking for. Now you'll go to this crank right here. Click on the crank. Then you'll scroll down to advanced search. And then this page will pop up right here. All right. So pre-warning, 
this might take a bit of time so maybe longer than you just typing in certain things but in the long run it will narrow down your searches so that you won't have 339 million billion different results right so with advanced search you could basically narrow it down you can narrow down from the different dates that the site or the different resources was published you can omit the words that you don't actually want to pop up and you can basically have a more exact search right this part right here at the bottom we'll come to we'll first focus here on top okay so i want a things fall apart analysis okay now the second block right here which is the inverted commas block right if you use the inverted commas it will give you an exact search so the search engine will focus directly on those words right so they look for the words in the titles they look for the words in the text anything that has this word or phrase they will look for so they'll scour through all the websites filtered and only find websites and uh, documents or resources that relate to this exact word so things fall apart analysis i want them to focus on the word analysis and then maybe um let's say character development the let's, let's say the themes the themes right then the third block would also basically do the same as exact search but this will now more look like a look for in the title and other words that these words also has to be prevalent in that uh, site or in that website that's based on what i am searching so again maybe analysis and themes but maybe i want it to be the novel or um let's say ebook right so i want those words to be prevalent in the website or i want it to be somewhere in the website or on the search uh, results now where things fall apart there's a lot of other things that's going to pop up we all know when we search search into certain things like for example we search um the ecosystem right we maybe want videos on the ecosystem we want material on the ecosystem but then they give me the ecosystem they give me space for example now i don't want them to give me uh, search results on space i want them to give me of the ecosystem about nature and all of those things now you can allow the search engine to filter out any words or any results that you think might pop up right so then you would use the minus sign right there so the minus sign would basically mean omit these words so none of these words has to be in that search result and anything that's related to these words will be taken out right so maybe i don't want the movie so i'll say omit the movie and maybe i also don't want for example anything that has to do with spark cliff notes right so i don't want the easy way out i don't want anything that has the movie so maybe the movie things fall apart and i don't want any of the sites that are linked to cliff notes right on the cliff notes site spark notes i would have to physically type in the minus spark notes and those types of things but that's fine for now and then here in the last bar we will basically have a numbers ranging from say the year that you want it from to the next year right so maybe you don't want something from 1990 you don't want any results from 1990 until now because most of it is irrelevant from then right especially for academic resources maybe you want something a bit more recent or if you want different measurements or different numbers if you're doing economics or you're doing business all those are types of things then you would use this bar right here so i want analysis from say 2019 until 2023 so any website any resources that are linked from 2019 to 2023 right so i'll recap the quotation marks allow a more exact phrase or search the or or and will basically find different words in the settings or in the sites that allow for a search of those two 
the minus will take away any words that are related to these words that you don't want to pop up or the different search results that you don't want to pop up, such as the movie and the cliff notes. And then the last part will allow you to actually search according to a certain date. So you basically refine the search now from the 900s or the 90s or the 80s or the 70s, but maybe just from the early 2000s or the latter part of the 2000s. Now, once you have all of this done right here, we will just scroll down and press advanced search. Right. And as you see right here, my search results have significantly, significantly decreased. Right. So now I maybe have a site. Right. So uh, let's take the Sparknote site for example. Okay. But I don't want to read through the whole site and actually go look for certain things that relate to my topic. Right. I don't want to actually go through the whole thing and okay, maybe this is going to work. Maybe this is not going to work. Right. Most search engines, Google, Edge, and etc., they have a built in search function on the search engine, which allows you to search for keywords for phrases and all of those things that are related to what you are looking for, right? So there's two ways that you can do it. The one way you can press control F and then this small bar right here will pop up, right? So that's control F then the small search bar here will pop up. Or you could go to the three dots here in the right hand corner. Right, hold on the three dots here in the right hand corner. Oh, is that not right? Oh, all right. And then press fine. And then it's the same like with an Excel spreadsheet or with a Google document or with a PowerPoint or whatever. You can search with different keywords on the site, right? So maybe I want keywords such as things fall apart. Uh, let's say analysis. Right. And then it will also tell me the amount of results that are related to what I have searched. Right, so it will automatically take me and it will highlight what the keywords or the phrases that I have searched for in this document or in this site right here. And if you see here on the right hand side, the yellow line right here, it will also tell me where exactly the words are prevalent or the phrases are prevalent. Right, let's try again, maybe let's say a conco because he's the main character. Right. And there's 32 places right here where a conco pops up throughout this site. So this is also a quick way for you to actually search through mountains and mountains of content, especially PDFs and stuff that's related to your curriculum. I know for business studies economics, it's a vast amount of work that people have to cover. And if you're trying to find the resources based on that, then I know it's going to be a 30 or 40 page website or document or PDF using Google by your similar websites meaning that you could type in a theme or whatever. So say, for example, poetry, right? And then there's two ways that you can do it. You can either type the word site and then use the colon and then say which site you want it from. So then it will just pop up all the different relevant things that's related to poetry on that specific site that you want. Or you could go to the crank right here. Again, go to advanced search. Right, do all of these things right here. But if you scroll down to the second part right here, by site or domain, okay? So this will limit the search to only the website or the domain that you want the resources to come from. Maybe you enjoy using Spark Notes and you feel like they explain things well, you would like using that. Maybe you enjoy using the WCDE portal which by the way has a plethora of resources so you won't actually really have to go through the searching things but i think that's a lesson for another time but please go search out and play around with the e-portal as well and um, maybe you like to use a education site or organization or government site right then there's two ways that you can search it okay so we'll keep that open right there so maybe i want poetry then you type in poetry and then type site and then use a semicolon right then after the semicolon you will type in the site that you want this poetry from so i want it from wiki so any site that has wiki in the url 
and as you see here, here it's different poetry things from sites that has wiki in the URL or in the website name. Go down. Maybe you're looking for a specific document, right? So maybe I'm just looking for PDF. I'm just looking for PDFs. I'm not looking for Excel sheets. I'm not looking for Google Docs or documents. I'm just looking for PDFs, right? Something I can quickly download and then just pop on the projector, right? So once I've filled in all of these things, you don't have to fill it in, right? So it will work if many of the things are left empty. The only thing that can't be left empty is obviously the normal search. You will go down here to file type, right? And then click the drop down box. It will give you different types of files that's available on the on Google basically. Right? So this is not based on what you have searched. This is just in general that there's different file types available. So I want only PDFs to pop up when I'm searching this. So then I'll click on PDFs right here. I have my wiki there, only PDFs, and I'll press advanced search. And as you see right here only pdfs popped up all right i'll go into one quickly just to show you let's go into say this one and as you see here only pdfs popped up so this pdf is on the art of poetry right now this did it for me already here if you don't want to go through that tedious way or you don't want to go through that advanced search way what you can do is in front type what you are searching for and then type file type so you basically type the word file type using the colon and then you type what type of file you're looking for so say a pdf you're looking for a pdf now maybe i'm looking for excel say excel right and different excel sheets will pop up as you see there excel excel sheets now i'm maybe looking for powerpoints on poetry so then i'll type powerpoints And there's no PowerPoints on the net for poetry. And then let's try doc. And just different documents based on poetry. And then the last thing for this advanced search is the few options right here. Right? So you can search according to a language. Language. So if you are Afrikaans teacher and you just want Afrikaans resources or you want things for part in Afrikaans, I don't know if you get in Afrikaans yet. Then you can click on Afrikaans. If you want it based on a particular region, so you want it by a particular site that's maybe in South Africa or was by a South African author or South African um, journalist, then you can change it right there. And then you could also choose according to when it was updated, meaning when the site or another site uploaded their resources based on what you have searched, right? So you can anywhere from 24 hours ago that uploaded to up to a year ago and so forth and so on. Or you could choose any. Right, so this is YouTube right here. We all know YouTube, okay? So let's search something quickly. Uh, let's say for example, things fall apart. And there, this is. Now, as I said, there is so much options that pop up. I have a plethora of options and I don't actually want to go into every single one. That's why here in the right hand corner is the filters option. Right, so if you click on the filters option right here, or we'll open up this bar, which you can filter according to the upload date when the video was uploaded, the type of video, a channel, a playlist or movie, the duration of the other type of um, video that's gonna pop up, Different features such as, does it have Creative Commons license? Can you use it publicly? Does it have the 360 function where you can basically go around the uh, video and all of those things? Location, is it purchased? All of those things. And then you can also sort by relevance, the upload date, the view account, how many people actually view the video and the rating because you can rate videos so the amount of thumbs ups basically rates the video. So if there's a lot of thumbs up, it will be a top class video lot of um, thumbs down so it wouldn't be right so maybe I'm not looking for something long I'm looking for something between 4 and 20 minutes I'm not looking for a video that's an hour long so now we'll just click on this right here 
and then it will automatically filter so that it can be anything from four minutes to 20 minutes, but nothing over 20 minutes. But now maybe it's still a vast variety. Maybe I want something that is just a video. So not a channel, not a prayers, just a video. So now I'll press video. And then it will filter it even more. Right? But I can go even further. Maybe I want something that's 4K quality or HD quality. I want something that's kind of something that's visually appealing. Right? So I want something that's 4K or even something that's Creative Commons license. So let's say Creative Commons license for argument's sake. Right? So these are the ones that I can use publicly. Right? So the words things fall apart analysis will be in the title of the video in each search result that has popped up. Right? So this will work for anything. Maybe let's say uh, Romeo and Juliet in title. Right? So in every title that pops up for every video, for every podcast, every playlist and all of those things, Romeo and Juliet will be in the title. So this will save you time, especially if you are typing something that has numerous amounts of videos like the ecosystem, like um, space and all of those things. And you don't have time to actually go through every single video to actually look is this the one or take up your data basically because it will provide different search results. You could refine your search by typing in title or by minusing with omitting certain words or even adding certain words because YouTube provides different results based on suggestions on the words that you have searched but also on what you watch and what is popular, right? So most of the time they will always list the videos based on what is popular or what you have watched and as you see here there's more filters right here okay so to also try to suit your taste if you are always using like myself Romeo and Juliet and those types of things and I always use video spark notes and Dr. Aiden they will pop up first because that's based on my suggestions right so it's also like an AI that basically conforms itself to what you actually enjoy watching or what you don't enjoy watching or the type of channels that you watch all the time or use all the time for your uh, classroom or for your personal use.